Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a blessed day, and I want to say to the, all the women who are watching today who will, who will get this uh, invite to church tonight, Happy International Women's Month. Yes, March is International Women's Month. And uh, I, praise the Lord, am uh, one of those who quickly and readily salute the women. Thank God for women. Uh, thank God for their role uh, in creation. There can be no human race without women. Uh, thank God for their role in the church. Uh, there would be no church without our women. Thank God for the role of mothers and sisters and, and women, women in the workplace, women inventors, women, praise the Lord, women who preach the word of God, women, thank God for the women. What's in unfortunate today uh, in this International Women's uh, Month is that women today have to share the spotlight on International Women's Month with fake women, deranged individuals, silly men whose spirits have been broken, men who have uh, serious spiritual problems and who are mentally ill and uh, who needs deliverance, uh, and I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just telling you the truth. There's got to be something wrong with you up here in your head. If you are a man and you think that you are a woman or if you are a woman and you think that you are a man, uh, spare me the, gar the, the, the garbage about, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a biological this or biological that biology, nothing. You're a man. If you're a man, if you're a male, you're a man, you're a man. You're a man, uh, you, you are a man in the, in the physical sense. You are a man in the spiritual sense. You are a man even in the mental sense. You're just confused. An uh, evil spirit, something has gotten in there that has confused you. But I'm here to tell you that you are a man. And, you know, we use the word gender, which is actually a uh, literary term. Gender is supposed to... Uh, uh, apply to words uh, uh, in language. Gender is not supposed to apply to the sexes. God made two sexes. God made them male and God made them female. Now, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because I am so excited about what God is doing right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And it so happens to take place during the time that is set aside as International Women's Month. Here we have uh, the launch of our second Tuesday night sisters starting on March the 14th. And I'm so excited about it. And listen, over 400, we're approaching the 450 mark of women who have signed up to be a part of this move of God that the Lord placed upon my lovely wife, Pamela's heart to do. And they have been doing this now for quite some time. And uh, I don't know if when the Lord gave her to do it, that she was aware that uh, March was uh, International Women's Month. I don't know how long March has been International Women's Month, but I do know this. Uh, during this time, God has anointed her to launch this move of God, and women are coming together, studying the Word of God, and being reinforced with God's truth about women and who they are. And I thank God for uh, the response. Thank you for Germany, uh, uh, England, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Connecticut, Michigan, Delaware, Wisconsin, Texas, Virginia, Maryland, Georgia, Louisiana, Washington, uh, Illinois, Florida, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and all over the great state of North Carolina. Women from everywhere are responding to the call, and the timing couldn't be better. Thank God that God is raising her, has raised her up, and there are other women doing a work for the Lord. Women who aren't confused about who they are. 
On the other hand, my friends, we just saw something that took place that just breaks your heart, that just breaks your heart, and you wonder what in the world has happened. Uh, the Wade family, the Wade and Gabrielle, I guess they're at it again. Their son chose uh, this past week, I think it was, we got this picture of it on the screen there, to launch his first runway in Paris. Look at this young son uh, walking down a runway trying to look like a woman. Now, you know, just a few years ago, this type of behavior would have been rightly labeled as child abuse. But look at where we are today. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 the father has the nerve to tweet and to say, I'm a proud dad and stuff like that. And you wonder, I know some of you wonder, what and why do you talk about these things? Why bring this up? Because these people have influence. These people are featured on sports shows, award shows, in the news, uh, in the print media, all online. And I am one of those who will never cease to, to lend my voice to what God says and to speak to these issues and say to you out there, uh, you regular people, just like me, uh, the regular man and woman on the streets, we know we're not going to win an NAACP image award. We won't win a, an Oscar or a Grammy. And by the way, who cares? But uh, we are people too. And we know what is right. And we don't want you to get led off course and misled by some people who has, have lost their binds. I tell you, Gary, it seems to me that the, the plan to make money off of this young man's mental and spiritual illness seems to be going quite well. And uh, using him uh, for a commercial advantage. And one day, one day, if uh, uh, the medical uh, uh, technology, the medical community is true, if the psychological community is true, if uh, uh, people like Dr. Hugh and others who have, who no longer perform same sex uh, operations and things like that on children, the day will come that that young man is going to wake up. I pray that it does. And I pray that he will not have mutilated himself too much and destroyed himself to where it's too late. Because you can dress him up. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. You can put a dress on. You can put on female clothing. You can, if, if you can find a pump big enough to fit your big feet, you can put pumps on your feet, makeup on your face, eyelashes, fake eyelashes, fake this, fake that. But underneath all of that, if you're born male and someone just swaths your saliva, just get a little DNA. After all the wigs, the makeup, and all oh, the fake, the fingernails, and you've had your your Adam's apple uh, shaven down, and they pumped you with so much estrogen uh, that, that that they got your voice uh, several octaves higher, and all that DNA. You know the people say trust the science. DNA says, fellow, fella, guy, man. And that's what's so sad about what's being done to people who are clearly gender dysphoria. It's clearly, clearly a disorder. And it's not one that should be encouraged. It's not one where you should tell the person, I admire you for being so brave. It's one where someone needs someone in their family, uh, in their life, who can put their arms around them and say, listen, I'm going to walk with you through this time of confusion in your life. And you'll thank me. You'll be glad when it's over. And, and you'll see that the God who created everything, God who made that sun, God who made the moon, God who made the stars, God who sets the seasons in place, God who made the air that you breathe, 
God who, who praise the Lord made it possible for people to be able to afford airplanes, I mean, to build airplanes and cars and all that exists because everything that exists has been made from that which uh, is already here. All of our cities and infrastructure and uh, medical breakthroughs and all of these things. God put these things in the earth. God did it. The God of the Bible did it. And it's just taken us uh, these many years to figure out how to extract, to extract them and to get our medicines, infrastructure, fuel, you name it from these things so that our standard of living can be improved and and uh, and we can live and, and 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 continue on as as a people and yet there are those now who argue that god has gotten it wrong well i want to say to my wife pamela i want to say to you out there who are watching i want to say to those of us who are standing by biblical truth continue to stand on the word because the word of the Lord is right. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm on for bear tonight. My biggest problem of late has been, God, uh, uh, how can I fit this in? I, I, you know, you start reading the Bible, I'm going to tell you something. It just takes you on a trip. And, uh, and the word of God is so fascinating and God is so big. And right when you think you're learning a little something about the Lord, <laughs> and, and you find out just through studying the scripture that you don't know anything. And it's, and it's just the most fascinating thing. I've been pursuing the God of the Bible and serving him. And been, been I got born again in 1977, November of that year, uh, the third Sunday in November. And the Lord saved me on the 20th of 77. And here I am today sitting here talking to you. Praise the Lord um, in the month of March. Uh, 2023. What day is this? The, 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 the ninth, 10th, the ninth. Here we are. And I'm still excited about Jesus. And it's not because I'm excited, but it's because he's exciting. He's a mighty God. And I want to encourage you to serve him. And I want to encourage you to meet me here tonight at the upper room church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That's what I'm so excited about. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. God's going to bless us real good. And we're going to continue to walk in biblical truth and common sense. And the Lord is going to bless us real good. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.